So the next thing we're going to look at is the effects of moisture and rising damp on our substructure. So I've got some ground line here. There's our uh, masonry on the outside of our house. So we've got a situation here where we've got ground which may possibly get laden with moisture, stays wet a lot of the time. And the effect that it has is there's potential for this section of the house to absorb that moisture and through the capillary action that moisture can track its way up through the masonry products potentially getting into the house and that effect of moisture rising up is called obviously rising damp luckily for us in Queensland, it's such a, uh, a warm climate generally, we don't usually have a, a real big problem with rising damp. I've seen very, very few houses in Queensland that have uh, suffered because of it. But let's have a look at another scenario that we do have to be wary of. Here is a, a fairly typical situation where we have an outside deck. We've got some steel posts going straight into the ground, concreted straight in, and those would need to be protected from corrosion by either using galvanised posts or some sort of uh, bitumen paint around the bottom of them. But this timber post here is what I really want to pick on. So we have a situation here where that post has been concreted into the ground, which is really, in my opinion, not a good building practice, because you have a situation where the moisture in the ground sits on here constantly and in fact you might think that the bottom of this post would be the first part of the post to rot away but it's actually not it's at the ground line there's two things that timber needs in order to rot one is oxygen and the other is moisture and below the ground line there's plenty of moisture but not an awful lot of oxygen where you get both is right at this ground line all right, so we've got a, a post there that's just come out of that hole. We've just pulled it out. It's been in for 16 years. This is, I think, an H5 treated pole, definitely at least H4, possibly H5. As you can see, there's a little bit of deterioration right down the bottom, but most of it is right in this area. And this is the area that was right at the surface level. That's where the most amount of rot occurs because below that the oxygen can't get to it and above it the moisture doesn't sit on it all the time. It gets to dry out. So the next one we pull out will be that one over there and we'll see what that one looks like. So this is the next one that's going to come out. You can see sort of right at the surface level there's a bit of rot there. So Get the phone to you while I move this out. I'm going to get a slightly further away here to start with. And we can see it's the same thing. No deterioration up the top. Very little deterioration down the bottom. Most of that's mud. It is a little bit softer, but the worst of it's right there at ground level where it gets plenty of moisture that doesn't dry out but also plenty of oxygen to get in for the bacterial action to occur. A much better option is to have a metal stirrup concreted into the ground and then the post bolted to that and that keeps the post up off the ground. It also provides a quite an effective termite barrier this distance from the lowest timber member down to the ground has to be at least 75 mil. And you'll notice that I've not left the post touching the bottom bar of this stirrup. That's left clear, again, to prevent moisture sitting on places like that. Wherever you have one piece of timber sitting on something, that tends to be where moisture likes to sit and collect, and it's the last place where moisture can dry out. The other effect of moisture rising up from the ground is the effect on any exposed timber, especially outside decks. We actually have a legal requirement to leave our structural timber members high enough off the ground 
in order that the moisture rising from the ground doesn't sit on our timber work and keep it moist all the time. And that clearance is described in the National Construction Code. Here we are in section 3.4. You can see we need a minimum of 400 millimetres clearance. However, we can go down to 150, but that's just in the last two metres up next to the house. But 400 mil is a good measurement to try and keep timber clear of the ground. So here we have a small hardwood deck which has gone around the outside of this house leading up to the front door. It is partially exposed to the weather and partially underneath a roof. So let's look at this section first. We can see here that it is very close to the ground and that moisture that has been rising up has just sat on the timber all the time because it's constantly moist. Even this bit up here which is not actually on the ground has suffered quite a lot of moisture damage. And then the hardwood decking in this area you can see it has the decking itself isn't too bad but the joist underneath is completely gone and you can see the sleeper there is all rotted out you can see a bit of deterioration on the on the hardwood so when we have a look over at this section you can see this section is also exposed to the rain but it is sitting above a concrete slab so there's a bit of moisture there but the joist is still solid because the uh, there's no ground line to be releasing a lot of moisture up to it so that joist is still pretty good so there's no ground moisture coming up to it but again the decking is a little bit deteriorated but it's still solid so let's have a look at this section over here so this section is over a concrete slab but also underneath the roof now this decking is exactly the same age it all went down at the same time and you can see it's actually in perfect condition absolutely no deterioration at all along there and so that is a good example of the effect of moisture. So we've got a, a section where you're getting rain from above as well as ground moisture. A bit of decking there where it gets rain but not so much moisture from the ground and then decking in there that's fully protected. And you can see the effects of that moisture. And so that covers protecting our timber from rising damp. Thank you and good luck.